Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman. Our ge- next guest up is Melissa McNamee. Welcome to Radio Entrepreneurs. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. You practice immigration law, and you've got a whole bunch of topics that we can cover. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, I-9s and uh, why they're important? Well, in, in my employment-based um, practice, we've been doing a lot lately with making sure that our companies are compliant. There is a little form called an I-9. A lot of U.S. employers don't realize that this needs to be filled out whether you employ two people or 200 people. It needs to be filled out whether you employ American workers or non-American workers. Everybody in the company from the president on down needs to fill out this form and you need to have it on file. And if you don't and the DOL comes knocking on your door, there are significant fines and penalties. Well, I'm sure that most people n- are aware of the W-9, which sort of gets you your tax status, but the I-9, I imagine, is uh, work status? Is it late? Usually you would fill out your W-9 and your I-9 on your, in the very be- when you first hired, your first week of work, your first couple days of work. Um, you would be surprised how many companies completely skip over the I-9 um, because you don't need to fill it out to get paid, so it just gets, it just gets missed. Um, the I-9 is a, it's a really short form. It basically says, uh, what's your name, what's your date of birth, what's your address, and do you have authorization to work in the United States? If so, what is it? Were you born here? Do you have a work visa? Show us proof. Um, and those, that document needs to be filled out and kept on file up until several years after you terminate that employee. And typically... Uh, provides for supporting documentation as well, a copy of a passport or a copy of some something that proves your ability to work. Right. So there's a specific list, and that's where it can get a little sticky sometimes, is as the employer, you can't ask for specific documents. It would be inappropriate for me as an HR person to say, tomorrow bring me your U.S. passport. You can't say that. So to to suggest that they bring a specific document could be deemed discrimination. So you have to be very careful. You can't request a specific document. You can present the list. List A documents are, are a singular document that prove that you have the right to live and work here, such as a U.S. passport. List B and C is a combination of two documents, like your driver's license and your U.S. birth certificate. Um, if you you need to present the originals to human resources, and then the company needs to decide, and we often discuss this in, in consultations, whether or not they want to keep copies of these on file. Hmm. If you keep copies for some, you must keep copies for all. It's a fine line between uh, doing your job and making sure you're complying and discriminating against your employees that have uh, an international sounding last name. 